Hello students, how are you today? I hope you're having a good one and uh, hope you're ready for another story. The one I have for you today is written by Bird Baylor. Bird Baylor, if you remember, wrote a book um, called Everybody Needs a Rock that I read to you. So this one is called I'm in Charge of Celebrations by Bird Taylor and the illustrations are by Peter Pernall, the same one who did the illustrations for Everybody Needs a Rock. So uh, you'll find again that the art is quite nice. It tells the story. It's a little abstract, meaning it is not like a real life uh, story or picture that you might see if you looked out a window but it tells about the story very nicely. I'm in charge of celebrations. Sometimes people ask me, aren't you lonely out there with just desert all around you? I guess they mean the bear grass and the yuccas and the cactus and the rocks. I guess they mean the deep ravines and the hawk nests and the cliffs and the coyote trails that wind across the hills. <laughs> Lonely? <laughs> I can't help laughing when they ask me that. I always look at them surprised. And I say, how could I be lonely? I'm the one in charge of celebrations. Sometimes they don't believe me, but it's true, I am. I put myself in charge. I choose my own. Last year, I gave myself 108 celebrations besides the ones that they close school for, I cannot get by with only a few. Friend, I'll tell you how it works. I keep a notebook and I write the date and then I write about the celebration. I'm very choosy over what goes in that book. It has to be something I plan to remember the rest of my life. You can tell what's worth the celebration because your heart will pound and you'll feel like you're standing on top of a mountain and you'll catch a breath like you were breathing some new kind of air. Otherwise, I count it just an average day. I told you I was choosy. Friend, I wish you'd been here on Dust Devil Day, but since you weren't, I'll tell you how it got to be my first real celebration. You can call them whirlwinds if you want to. Me, I think Dust Devils has a better sound to it. Well, anyway, I always stop to watch them. Here, everyone does. You know how they come from far away, moving up from the flats, swirling and swaying and falling and turning, picking up sticks and sand and feathers and dry tumbleweeds. Well, last March 11th, we were all going somewhere. I was in the back of a pickup truck. When the dust devils started to gather, you could see they were giants. You'd swear they were calling their friends to come too. And they came, dancing in time to their own windy music. We all started counting. We all started looking for more. They stopped that truck and we turned around and around, watching them all. There were seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
at a time like that, something goes kind of crazy in you. You have to run to meet them, yelling all the way. You have to whirl around like you were one of them, and you can't stop until you're falling down. And then all day you think how lucky you were to be there. Some of my best celebrations are sudden surprises like that. If you weren't outside at that exact moment, you'd miss them. I spent a lot of time outside myself looking around. Once I saw a triple rainbow. That's right, a triple rainbow that ended in a canyon where I'd been the day before. I was halfway up a hill, standing in a drizzle of rain. It was almost dark, but I wouldn't go in because of the rainbows, of course. And there, at the top of the hill, a jackrabbit was standing up on his hind legs, perfectly still, looking straight at that same triple rainbow. I may be the only person in the world who's seen a rabbit standing in the mist, quietly watching three rainbows. That's worth a celebration anytime. I wrote it down and drew the hill and the rabbit and the rainbow and me. And now, August the 9th is Rainbow Celebration Day. I have Green Cloud Day too. Ask anybody and they'll tell you clouds aren't green. But late one winter afternoon, I saw this huge green cloud. It was not bluish green or grayish green or something else. This cloud was green. Green as a jungle parrot. And the strange thing was that it began to take a parrot's shape. First the wings, and then the head and beak. High in the winter sky, that green bird flew. Now, it didn't last more than a minute. You know how fast a cloud can change, but I still remember how it looked. So I celebrate green clouds on February the 6th. At times like that, I always think, what if I missed it? What if I'd been in the house? Or what if I hadn't looked up when I did? You can see I'm very lucky about things like that. And I was lucky on Coyote Day because out of all time, it had to be one moment only that a certain coyote and I could meet. And we did. Friend, you should have been here too. I was following deer tracks, taking my time, bending down as I walked, kind of humming. I hum a lot when I'm alone. I looked up in time to see a young coyote trotting through the brush. She crossed in front of me. It was a windy day and she was going east in that easy, silent way that coyotes move. She pushed into the wind. I stood there hardly breathing, wishing I could move that way. I was surprised to see her stop and turn and look at me. She seemed to think that I was just another creature following another rocky trail. That's true, of course, I am. She didn't hurry. She wasn't afraid. I saw her eyes and she saw mine. That look held us together. Because of that, I never will feel quite the same again. So on September the 28th, I celebrate Coyote Day. 
Here's what I do. I walk the trail I walked that day and I hum softly as I go. And finally, I unwrap the feast I've brought for her. Last time I was, it was three apples and some pumpkin seeds and an ear of corn and some big soft homemade ginger cookies. The next day I happened to pass that way again. Coyote tracks went all around the rock where the food had been and the food was gone. Next year, I'll make it even better. I'll bring an extra feast and eat there too. Another one of my greatest of all celebrations is called the time of falling stars. It lasts almost a week in the middle of August and I wait all year for those hot summer nights when the sky goes wild. You can call them meteor showers if you want to. Me, I like to say they're falling stars. All that week, I sleep outside. I give my full attention to the sky, and every time a streak of light goes shooting through the darkness, I feel my heart shoot out of me. One night, I saw a fireball that left a long, red, blazing trail across the sky. After it was gone, I stood there looking up, not quite believing what I'd seen. The strange thing was, I met a man who told me he had seen it too while he was lying by a campfire 500 miles away. He said he did not sleep again that night. Suddenly, it seemed that we, too, spoke a language no one else could understand. Every August of my life, I'll think of that. Friend, I've saved my New Year celebration until last. Mine's a little bit different from the one most people have. It, it comes in the spring. To tell the truth, I never did feel like my new year started January the 1st. To me, that's just another winter day. I let my year begin when winter ends and morning light comes earlier the way it should. That's when I feel like starting new. I wait until the white-winged doves are back from Mexico and wildflowers cover the hills and my favorite cactus blooms. It always makes me think I ought to bloom myself. And that's when I start to plan my New Year celebration. I finally choose a day that's exactly right. Even the air has to be perfect and the dirt has to feel good and warm on bare feet. Usually it's a Saturday around the end of April. I have a dream that I, that I beat to signal the day. Excuse me. I have a drum that I beat to signal the day. Then I go wandering off, following all of my favorite trails to all of the places I like. I check how every, everything is doing. I spend the day admiring things. If the old desert tortoise I know from last year is out strolling around, I'll go his direction for a while. I celebrate with horned toads and ravens and lizards and quail and friend, it's not a bad party. Walking back home, kind of humming, sometimes I think about those people who ask me if I'm lonely here. I have to laugh out loud. The end. So, lovely story about our world and where we live and all of the amazing things that we can see and celebrate. 
If you don't take the time to just go outside and look, then you're going to miss a lot of things. My wife and I love to watch sunsets, and we'll drive to see them. We love the beautiful time, that beautiful time of day. We love to go to the mountains. We like to look. We like to walk around all sorts of places just to see something new and different and learn from it. So I think that you will do well to, to get into a habit of taking some time and just going out and enjoying our world. All right, y'all have a wonderful day. Hope you have fun talking about this. We'll see you later. See you again soon. Bye-bye.